Hi guys, this is Vitaly with AFT Dispatch and A2C Logistics and in today's video I'd like to speak with you about some proof that things are improving. But first, roll the intro. Welcome back. Before we get started, I'd like to ask you to please like the video, be sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss a single release of our videos where every Friday we're talking about something that could benefit you in your trucking businesses and your trucking careers, as well as cover the loads we've successfully booked for our customers consisting of lease on owner operators and carriers operating under their own MC authorities running under our truck dispatch services. As always guys, big, big thank you for all the likes you've provided in all the previous videos. Please do keep them coming and let's look at some of this good news. It's definitely a long time coming and we'll certainly take it. Guys, uh, thank you by the way for last week's video. Uh, absolutely went viral, uh, you know, over 20,000 views. I know it was uh, quite action-packed, uh, info-packed and I'm really glad that the response was as positive as it has been. If you haven't seen that video, I'll leave a little card here in the corner. Make sure to take a look at that. I think that'll give you some really good pointers, some really good uh, information that you can actually take with you, use and uh, strategize your you know your processes in the trucking industry now took some notes here for today's video uh, again proof that things are improving now yeah, we have a long way to go until we can say that things are good they're not there yet but here are a few things that will kind of you know hopefully put a little smile on your face all right now we're going to look over at what these things are also okay so for example tender rejection rates uh they tender rejection rates they measure basically supply and demand in uh, the industry. So it looks like uh, it looks at the percentage of turned down loads basically. How many loads are being offered? How many of them are actually turned down? They have to come back to the market with a higher price or something uh, like that in order for that load to finally be taken or it never gets delivered. Now that percentage is at 4% which is the highest level in six months. Now 4% tender rejection rate is very very low still but that set a record of being the highest level of six months, we'll take it. Now, one thing that we have to definitely consider that a lot of people don't really talk about, the tender rejection rate is actually looking at the contract market and it's also looking at uh, medium uh, to large size uh, carriers. And again, it is not based off the spot market. There are other indicators of that as well. Now, let's look at tender volume, okay? Tender volume is a very strong indicator of market demand for trucking capacity. So. Um, you know, the demand for the number of trucks to haul freight in the market, right? Now that number has actually been up by 12%. Uh, it's, uh, it's up 12% over the last six months. That is very, very good news. Now, most of 2023 actually showed very high capacity. In other words, and I know you guys don't like to hear this, but basically too many trucks for the amount of available freight in the market. So we can say there's not enough freight or we can say there are too many trucks. Either way, there are too many trucks and there's not enough freight. So, you know, uh, kind of look at it however you like. That is the reason why we are where we are now. And um, by the way, I'm going to make an, a, a very detailed video about all this stuff. I'm going to show you some charts and I'm going to actually prove to you guys that this is all correct. And, uh, you know, I, I, especially on the last video, there's a lot of commentary out there where people, it, it was clear that people weren't really understanding um, what's actually going on. And I think that visually, once I'm actually able to make a video, go through the details and show you the visual charts, there will be no question at that point. It's, it's, it's going to just, you know, hey, now it makes sense. Now I understand. So that's what I'm going to try to, uh, you know, shoot over the weekend, get this over to you guys. I think that's going to be another good video that's going to be info packed and very helpful uh, to your understanding of the freight markets in America. Um, now, so most of 2023 had really high capacity. We're still in that situation. Like I said, I'll release the video. You'll see that in, in greater detail. Now let's look at the last 30 days. In the last 30 days, tender rejection was actually up 26%, but volume was only up by 1%. That's a very good indicator. That means that uh, carriers are getting fed up. Uh, basically volume only increased just a little tiny bit and that actually helped rejection rates uh, go up. So there's uh, you know more rejection from, from brokers, from shippers and basically saying look we, we're, we need more money in this. Now declining capacity uh, ultimately that's what we're looking for. We need to have declining capacity which means that we'll have less available trucks 
to you know to operate which will force the rates to actually come up and that's actually what's happening again watch the video from last week that has some really good information there and that'll actually make sense a lot of MCs are shutting down um, a lot of uh, a lot less MCs are starting up and these are the things that we need to see in a, you know as far as the general trajectory of the market it has to go this way in order for things to normalize now in 2023 the truckload rate um, and I'm really proud to say this so that the truckload rate average for 2023 uh, hovered between buck 50 and 210 per mile now as you guys have seen our our videos week in and week out we present you guys at top loads uh, but basically pretty much all of our guys are running above these numbers they have been in the toughest times in the market so we're certainly well above buck 50 we're certainly well above buck uh, 210 and you're gonna see in this uh, week's video we got guys running at over three bucks a mile even and we, again we've done it consistently this is what we're here for we're we're very proud to say this because we've been able to help a lot of carriers stay afloat stay in business same with the owner operators you know uh, work with top dispatchers they're able to make good money have a lower operating costs and basically get through this period so even with us they're not becoming rich or anything like that none of our you know none of our customers none of our carriers none of our leased on owner operators are you know making money hand over fist that's not the case but many have gone out of business and our guys we're very happy to say have remained in business been able to stay in business and they're going to get through these difficult times and going to come up winners on the other side of this hill all right so moving on so the so buck 50 to buck 10 uh, to 210 per mile is what you know basically the truckload rates have been for the you know for 2023 averages now the but the average break even cost uh, based on JP Morgan, uh, their analysis is that it's between $1.56 per mile and $1.90 per mile. Now, recently, the Federal uh, Safety uh, Administration, the FMCSA, actually uh, produced a document showing that uh, the operating costs were actually well above two bucks, like 220, two and a quarter, something like that on average. So it does vary, but this is a different organization, so totally different numbers. So um, obviously very, very close. If your operating costs are buck 50 and you're getting dollar, uh, dollar 50 a mile, you're losing six cents on a mile, having to put in uh, you know, your time, your effort, everything, and you're losing money in every mile. So that's something you definitely want to avoid. Now, low rates, high operating costs, and now even higher diesel than we've saw before, very high diesel costs, all of that is a very, very bad combination. And right now, that's what you guys are basically struggling with. That's what we're struggling with. That's what everybody in the United States, truckers are struggling with. That's why a lot of companies are going out of business because they just cannot operate in a negative for a very long extended period of time. It's very, very difficult. And uh, that's why they close down their MCs, sell equipment and get out of the industry. And what we're looking at is that the, the positive news here is that if volumes persist, so if they continue to climb, remember 1% increase, and if capacity declines, remember around 20 6% um, in terms of capacity declines and about 29% decrease from previous video on MC closure. So that, that, had, that period has begun. Companies are shutting down. So definitely hold on to your life. But ultimately, this combination will lead to higher uh, rates to come. So hold on, hold on, hold on, keep working hard and uh, you, you will make it on the other side uh, of that tunnel. Guys, uh, any questions, comments, and concerns, please leave them in the comment section below. Uh, make sure you smash the like button, subscribe to the channel. If you haven't done so, I'm gonna switch over to camera. We're gonna look over the lows that we book for our customers and I'll see you guys in just a moment. Welcome back, guys. Let's take a look at some of these lows. This week, we got vans and reefers, carriers and owner operators. Uh, you know, rates are good. No complaints. A little bit low on the miles with some of the guys. Uh, the growth could be better in certain areas. But when you consider uh, the amount of days, some guys made some really extraordinary money just in as little as five days. Anyway, let's get going. Start off with a reefer uh, coming out of uh, Cape Canaveral, uh, Florida or uh, Cape Canavera, Florida, going to North Charleston, South Carolina. This is a 41,000 pound load of frozen food and a reefer, negative 10 on a reefer, 399 miles booked at 800 bucks, got them 201 a mile, coming out to South Carolina, coming out of Florida. Excellent, excellent job. Then Seven Springs, North Carolina to Lodge, South Carolina. It's a watermelon load, 55 degrees on the reefer, 35,000 pounds on the way, 264 miles booked at 1,000 bucks, got them 379 a mile, coming out to South Carolina. Then right at Lodge, South Carolina, uh, uh, it was a load coming out to Jacksonville, Florida, and they had to come back to Lodge actually so you have to return to the shipper it's a 36,000 pound load of produce it was uh 
you know, fresh freight, 50 degrees on the reefer, 420 miles booked out, one of 2,200 bucks, got them 524 a mile. And then out of Lodge, North Carolina, once they got back, took another load going to Deerfield Beach, Florida, and a final in Pompano Beach, Florida. And one pick, two drop, 36,000 pound load of produce. Uh, again, very similar, very likely, I haven't seen a Raycon, but it's probably the same exact shipper. Uh, 50 degrees on a reefer, like I said, half the miles were empty because they came back empty. From my understanding, 528 miles booked at 2150, got them 407 a mile on that one. And ultimately, he only ran for five days. Uh, this is Harrison uh, running five days on a road from Thursday to Tuesday. 1611 loaded miles, but he managed to grow 6150 in his five days uh, a 382 per loaded mile average. Excellent job, 382 a mile, way to go Harrison. I know you're a very, very hardworking man and I know a little bit more about you uh, since we've been working for so many years now. So I certainly, hats off to you, I certainly applaud you. Well, well done. Uh, next we're gonna go to a dry van coming out of Aurora, Nebraska. Uh, go to West Jordan, Utah. It's a 42,000 pound load of dry goods, 820 miles booked at 2,800 bucks. Got them 341 a mile coming out to Utah. Then Vendover, Utah, going to Kent, Washington. It's a 43,000 pound load of bagged uh, traction, uh, traction melt. So probably like ice melt, things like that. 802 miles booked at 2,100 bucks. Got them 262 a mile. Then Kent, Washington to Walla Walla, Washington. It's a light load, 12,000 pounds of laundry appliances. 259 miles booked at 800 bucks. Got them 309 a mile coming out to Walla Walla. Excellent job. Uh, basically no deadhead anywhere. It was a, an excellent job. 1,881 loaded miles. Week on the road, there's Thursday to Thursday. Gross 57. 700 bucks got an average of 303 per loaded mile average on a regular dry van way to go thomas way to go next we got ourselves another dry van coming out of Elyria, ohio going to looks like sandersville georgia it's a 38,000 pound load of pull tape 753 miles booked at two grand got them 266 a mile then washington georgia to McAllister, oklahoma it's a 44,000 pound load of food ingredients, 889 miles booked at 1,800 bucks, got them 202 a mile. They finished off with Muskogee, uh, Oklahoma, going out to Loveland, Colorado, a, a longer run, FAK load, 41,000 pounds on a weight, 773 miles booked at 2,300 bucks, got them 298 a mile. Excellent job, seven days on a road, Monday to Monday. This is uh, Rogelio, uh, Monday, Monday, $6,100 grossed, 2,415 loaded miles ran at 253 per loaded mile average. Excellent job, Rogelio. Let's keep this thing going. Uh, next, we got ourselves another drive-in out of Via Byron, uh, Mississippi, going out to Sparks, Nevada. 41,000 pound load of food and beverages, 2,065 miles uh, loaded. Ran that at 3,800 bucks. Got them buck 84 a mile on a ton of miles, and it made up the difference. Uh, took a load out of Stockton, California, Denver, Colorado. 1,215 miles booked at uh, $3,050. Got them. 251 a loaded mile for a Coca-Cola load of 44,000 pounds. So about half the way, uh, about half the, the miles, but uh, considerably higher load. And then out of Denver, I will have to see what they're going to do next week. So uh, that was it. That was Sam uh, running Tuesday to Tuesday. Uh, gross $6,850 on his week. 3,280 loaded miles and some long runs. 6,850 gross ran an average of 209 per loaded mile. Then a reefer coming out of Smyrna, Tennessee with a one pick two dropper to Waterford, Michigan. And uh, there's a Novi or Novi, Michigan. It's a 20,000 pound load of snack food in total, 594 miles. Uh, on that one, $1,400 booked, got them 236 a mile coming out to Michigan. Then Pinconning, Michigan to North Little Rock, Arkansas with a 41,000 pound load of refrigerated good as 34 degrees on the reefer, 947 miles booked out one of 2,400 bucks. Got them 253 a mile, excellent job. Then out of uh, Mamel, Arkansas, and Rogers, Arkansas, two pick, one drop coming out to Compton, California. It's a 33,000 pound load of General Freight or FAK, 1,758 loaded miles, booked out one at 2,900 bucks. That's a buck 65 on a ton of miles coming out to Colorado, uh, California. They will make up the difference as a reefer going to California. That's not a bad rate, not a very heavy load. $6,700 booked in a week, Monday to Monday, 3,299 loaded miles at an average of 203 a mile. Did an excellent job, even with that buck 65. And next week's looking good. This is Milagres. He knows what he's doing. He trusts his dispatcher. He's been working with us for a very long time. Excellent job, 6,700 bucks for the week. Last but not least, we're gonna go to a dry van coming out of Houston, Texas. We 
with a one pick three dropper to Billings, Montana, Helena, Montana, and a final in Meridian, Idaho. It's a load of dampers, 25,000 pounds on the weight, a lot of miles, a 2,315 loaded miles. Booked that one at 4410. That's a buck 90, an excellent, excellent uh, rate. Uh, very light, good money, and ton of miles. Uh, ended up getting the buck 90 on that one. Then out of Nampa, Idaho to Othello, Washington. It's a 42,000 pound load of dry goods. 317 miles booked at 925. Got them 292 a mile coming out to Washington. And as we'll see, out of Connell, Washington, going to Boise, Idaho and a second stop in Shoshone, uh, Idaho. It's a 44,000 pound load of seeds, 439 miles, booked at 1,050, got him 239 a mile. That's why it's nice that he went to Washington like the previous carriers uh, or, or owner ops. Uh, but in any case, Reginald did a great job Thursday to Thursday, grossed $6,385 on his week, ran 3,071 respectable, uh, lots of loaded miles, ran those at 208 per loaded mile. Excellent job, guys. So as you can see, guys, we have carriers and owner operators averaging two to three bucks a mile, well above the same numbers that most of the industry is operating. They're running under these dollar amounts. This is why they're struggling. This is why so many are going out of business. So like I said at the beginning of the part of the video, we're here to help you guys get through the tough times. We've been through multiple market ups and downs. Our dispatchers know what they're doing. They know how to negotiate. They know the market lanes. We are not a new company and we've been through this before more than once. So let us help you guys out. Reach out, call or text us. The number is 801-448-6363. Call or text. Also, you can go to our website at aftdispatch.com. There's a, a huge amount of content um, on our blog that might be very useful to you. Uh, cover a range of different topics for many, many years. You guys can go back and back and back, well over 10 years of content there. We've been around. Um, and also there's, you know, information about our, prog uh, our, our program. You can fill out the short little forms, just a few questions. We'll get in touch with you guys. We'll answer all your questions. And if it's a good fit, we'll make sure to make things work. But don't, you know, don't rest on your laurels. We might be at the end of this downturn of the market and you definitely don't want to be in a position where you're pressed up against the wall and you have no more options left. Help yourself out before it's too late. Call or text us or go to our website. And until next week, stay healthy, be wealthy. Take care, guys.